Welcome to today's topic. I am going to be walking you through why your healthy eating is causing your physique plateau. It's so common for women to think that they're actually eating really well. And I know that I had this belief myself. I was really actually confused why I wasn't seeing results with my body composition because I really experienced that I was eating very well and that I was actually eating quite healthy. And so the belief that can underlie this experience is, you know, I actually eat really healthy most of the time. One of the things that can kind of um, stop us from dealing with this belief is a lot of hidden shame and actually guilt around this belief. There's a lot of negative emotions that are actually underneath this belief of, I actually eat healthy. Those can include things like conceit, arrogance, righteousness, pride, shame about eating, and ego. So we're gonna delve into those today. And my goal is to really empower you with a positive mindset for how to really think about your healthy eating and really look at and see if it's holding you back or not, okay? Um, so it's a very common belief that women have that they're actually um, eating healthy when in fact they are not. I remember I had a winter where I decided to eat vegan, all right? <laughs> and I ate all the vegan baked goods. I was convinced that if it was vegan, it was healthy. I was also going to a local farmer's market, like a CSA, and getting boxes of fresh vegetables. So I was bringing those home and like eating tons of fresh vegetables and eating vegan. And I was just convinced I was eating so healthy, right? Anybody else have that experience? And I was then really confused and frustrated that like I still didn't have the body composition results that I wanted. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm eating vegan and I'm eating healthy and I'm still not seeing the results. It can't possibly be my nutrition, okay? So this is very common. Um, I have a friend also who, um, she came to me recently and she's like, Heather, I just, I've gained like four to five pounds in my gut and I don't know why. And she's like, and she's like, I eat really healthy. I eat like salads, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, what do you snack on? She's like, well, I love these almonds. And sometimes I have like half a cup in the evening. And I'm like, well, there you go. Cause half a cup of almonds is 800 calories. Yo. All right. So if you are experiencing this, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not alone. Um, but we're going to unpack this belief and then help you move past it. So it stops uh, preventing you from achieving your goals. Okay. Because that's always the goal with a disempowering belief. So the first thing that might be going on for you is you might actually have some hidden shame or guilt that is unresolved about your eating habits at times. I know I experienced this. So when I thought I was eating healthy and I was eating lots of vegetables and I was eating vegan, I actually was also baking a lot and eating a lot of baked goods and kind of overeating. And I realized in hindsight that my perception of my eating as healthy was actually kind of a smoke screen um, to cover up the shame that I had around my overeating and what I felt like were kind of sugar binges, all right? It was actually easier for me to believe that I was eating healthy, um, right? And not have to deal with the fact that like, hey, I'm actually overeating or using food to cope with my emotions. Um, I'm being maybe obsessed with food or overly focused on it. Okay, so that's the first thing that can be going on behind that belief. The second thing is it can be cognitively dissonant for you to experience not being good at something because you are a successful woman. You are successful in your career. You are successful in your finances. You are successful in your relationships. So for you to experience not being good at something or not being able to accomplish or achieve something that you want can be cognitively dissonant for you. All right, and a lot of people don't realize that they're having cognitive dissonance as a successful woman. It creates tension in your identity to actually admit, hey, this is an area of life that I'm actually not 100% 
like knowledgeable about, all right? And when I first came to nutrition, despite being a registered nurse, I actually took a nutrition class in um, as a prereq before nursing school. I also did not understand nutrition, okay? So there's nothing to be ashamed about. But that tension that you may experience as a successful woman who is actually not successful with nutrition can lead you to a false protective belief that you actually do eat healthy when you're not, okay? Um, and so, you know, I wanna tell you another story about one of my clients who came to me and she was very confident in her knowledge and she just kind of thought she needed some accountability, which is very common when people come to me. They, a lot of women are convinced, oh, well, I actually know how to eat healthy. I just need someone to hold me accountable. Actually, I would say 99.9%, .9%, like maybe 0.1% of people actually who come to work with me understand nutrition and what they need to do to eat correctly. They think they know but they actually don't, all right? And this client kind of was convinced she knew it all, came to me. Um, at the end of the program, she kind of sheepishly admitted to me, she goes, you know, I actually did learn new things working with you, right? And I say that because we actually have to be like humble. We have to, have to actually admit, hey, I don't know everything in this area of my life in order to seek out guidance and support. And I see a lot of successful women get stopped from seeking help with their nutrition because then they have to admit like, hey, I'm actually not 100% capable in every area of my life. And like I said, that can be cognitively uh, dissonant, okay? So the thing is you actually don't know um, everything about nutrition and it's okay. It's not a character defect. It's not a deficit on your, um, your ability, your character. It's a knowledge gap. And it's because you weren't taught it because none of us were taught it. None of us got how to do your taxes in school and none of us got how to eat appropriately for health and body composition, right? Which is why like two thirds of America is obese and like we have such a health crisis and people don't know what to do, okay? So it's a knowledge gap for you. It's not a character defect. And hey, it's okay to admit, I don't know it all. Okay, I hire lots of experts in my life to help me do things like I have an expert do my taxes. No, thank you. I'm not going to do that, right? And it's okay to hire experts to help us. We have to let go of our ego and our pride in order to seek the support that we really need in order to be successful, okay? I'm gonna tell you another story about one of my very first clients. She was actually a registered dietitian, all right? She had a degree in nutrition. She was certified. She had to take an exam and be licensed to be a registered dietitian. And she came to me for nutrition help. Why? Because as a registered dietitian, she was actually not taught the type of nutrition that was going to help her achieve her body composition goals, all right? And I see this problem a lot actually in the education system. A lot of registered dietitians are actually not taught core skills around quantity and how to program quantity for their clients. And so this client of mine was humble. She had no ego about it. She had no ego. She could have easily been like, oh, I'm a registered dietitian. Like you have a nursing degree. That's completely different. Like I'm clearly the expert in nutrition, right? She could have easily pulled that card and gotten super arrogant, but she didn't. She stayed humble, right? And she hired me and she finally saw the body composition changes that she wanted to see. All right, so when you let go of ego and pride, there's something really amazing on the other side of that, which is results that you um, haven't gotten access to. I'll tell you another story about a client of mine who worked with me, um, and then she decided she wanted to try to coach other people in nutrition too, which I think is fantastic. And she went and signed up for a nutrition certification course. And you know, she came back to me to talk to me, and um, she, she shared with me how actually that course did not teach her how to program nutrition correctly for clients. And I was shocked because she had dropped, you know, like $800 on this nutrition certification course and it still didn't teach her what she needed to know. All right. So this is how deficient nutrition education is out there, y'all. All right. Registered dietitians don't have all the information. Even people who are signing up for nutrition certification courses aren't taught everything. I will tell you that 
I took a nutrition certification course that also had deficits and I had to self-educate by experimenting on my body, by reading lots of journal articles, by following experts and putting together my own system and process. What I do is my own intellectual property. It's my own system that I've created out of all of the information that I've had to curate and sift through because nutrition education is so deficient. So it's not your fault that you are deficient in nutrition knowledge, but it is your responsibility to fill that knowledge gap. Okay, so who do you need to become as a woman in order to move past this disempowering belief? Well, the first thing is you gotta drop your ego and pride. You gotta be like, hey, I'm willing to raise my hand and say I actually don't have it all figured out. I thought I was eating healthy, but after listening to you, Heather, I realized that like maybe I actually don't know it all. Like, yes, maybe I do know some things like vegetables are good for me, right? And try to avoid sugar, but I'm actually realizing I have a lot of knowledge gaps and I'm humble enough to say, hey, I don't know it all, all right? The second thing you need to become, you need to be willing to ask for and receive outside help, all right? You need to understand that asking for help doesn't mean anything about you, okay? A lot of successful women get stopped from asking for help because they perceive it as a sign of weakness. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of wisdom, okay? And the third thing is you need to admit that if you did know it all, you would have the results, all right? You wouldn't be struggling in this area of your life. Just like if I knew how to do taxes, they would be done. I, I wouldn't be struggling. I wouldn't need an accountant, all right? But I had to get humble enough to be like, hey, this is not my zone of expertise. I'm gonna hire an accountant to do my taxes. So what's available to you out of becoming this type of woman and really letting go of this um, negative disempowering belief that you actually eat really healthy and it's, you know, you're, you're fine, your nutrition's fine when it's not, is support and community. When we think we know it all, we isolate, right? We pull ourselves away from people because our ego and our pride is running the show and preventing us from really seeking out community and support, all right? We become overly independent and self-reliant. So by dropping your ego, you actually will tap into greater support, connection, community. Let me tell you, it is amazing to have support in your life. I have a therapist, I have a coach, I have actually have two coaches, I have networks of colleagues and friends, I have so many people that are in my network of support. So by dropping your ego, you can actually experience much greater connection with others. And the experience of being supported and guided is really incredible, y'all, all right? There's no better feeling than being stuck and then receiving support and having it help you move through where you were stopped, all right? The second thing that becomes available to you is transformational knowledge, what? Okay, when we admit that we don't know it all, we actually open our minds to knowledge that can completely transform our lives. So many of my clients say to me, wow, Heather, like I learned so much about nutrition. One of my clients, you can read her testimony on my website, she actually said, I feel like I got a master's degree in nutrition, right? The registered dietitian came to me for nutrition support, all right? And this is because I have a framework, I have a system that works, that's proven, that's based on science, and that really brings all of the information that's beneficial into a coherent system and structure, okay? Um, when we expose ourselves to new concepts, principles, and ideas, it transforms our life. I've never had a coach that didn't some way impact and transform my thinking. And I think that's one of the most beneficial things of working with a coach is they will transform the way that you think about things. And that is really priceless. You can get information from everywhere, right? You can just go to the internet, you can check out books, you can listen to podcasts, there's lots of free information. Some of it's good, some of it's not. But the ability to transform the way you think about things is something that only a really expert coach can give you, all right? 
And the third thing that becomes uh, available to you is results, all right? When we drop our ego, when we drop our pride, when we become humble, when we say, hey, I need help, I actually don't know it all, what becomes available are results. When you're stuck in life and you're arrogant about it, all right, you block yourself from transformation. You block yourself from the results that you desire. So on the other side of humility is access to results that you have not experienced before. All right, so I hope that today's topic was helpful for you and it helped you really shift the way that you might have been thinking about your healthy eating. It's very common to think that you are eating well and it's your genetics, it's your hormones, it's your stress, it's all these other things that are causing the issues with your body and it's not your nutrition. And I'm here to tell you that in about 99% of people's cases, it is not those things, it is their nutrition, okay? So if this sounds like something that interests you and you wanna le learn more, then I invite you to join the wait list for my coaching program. We're gonna be starting in January. So it's not open right now. Um, I am currently coaching other clients, but you can join the wait list. So you can be alerted first thing and you can join the wait list by visiting my Instagram bio and clicking the link there. You can also go to my website, so heathermcconaughey.com backslash empower, or go to my Instagram at heathermcconaughey and join the waitlist there. And then you'll be alerted first thing when program opens and then you can apply and learn more. Thank you for listening today. I hope that this was a transformational conversation for you today and I will talk to you soon.